From the Vietnam War to the Gulf War to Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, anywhere from 11 to 30% of veterans have suffered from PTSD. The Vietnam War ended 46 years ago, but our rates of PTSD have not decreased since then. PTSD is an ongoing issue that is not going to disappear and is ruining our service members' lives or sometimes killing them. By looking at the two main types of trauma that cause PTSD in the military, the stigma surrounding PTSD, and the effectiveness of PTSD screening and treatment, we will be able to see how serious of an issue it continues to be. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is defined as an anxiety disorder that may occur following a traumatic event with symptoms that persist more than one month after the traumatic event. In the military, there are two main types of trauma that cause PTSD. Combat trauma is the first. Veterans of every war have seen death and destruction. During combat, their lives are directly threatened. Sometimes soldiers witness the killing of civilians and the death of fellow soldiers and friends. Soldiers are ordered to kill the enemy, but sometimes the enemy is not who you would think. Sometimes it's a woman or a child, but the soldiers still have to kill them. Sexual trauma is the second. According to a nonprofit organization called Protect Our Defenders, in 2016, 8,600 women and 6,300 men were sexually assaulted. Most victims were assaulted more than once, resulting in a total of over 41,000 assaults just in 2016. Stigma surrounding PTSD is a major problem. There has always been a stigma toward mental health, and the same is true for PTSD among military members. The mental health advisory team conducted a survey in 2010 where they pinpointed some reasons surrounding the stigma that they may reject mental health services. They may be afraid of being seen as weak or feeling embarrassed. In the surveys on army service members who were diagnosed with mental health disorders, between 28.6 and 48.9% of them said it would be too embarrassing or were afraid of being seen as weak if they received mental health services. They may be afraid of being seen as incompetent or that it would hurt their career in the military. Even if they don't think it will be embarrassing or that they will be seen as weak, there were many other reasons found in the surveys that may cause service members to reject mental health services. Among the other reasons found were it would be harmful to their career, their leaders would blame them for their problem, members in their unit might have less confidence in them, and their unit leadership might treat them differently. PTSD screening and treatment is also an important factor. Screening and diagnosis of PTSD have improved exponentially in recent years. Existing assessment methods are effective in identifying the severity of PTSD symptoms and discriminating PTSD from other psychiatric disorders. Because multi-method assessments are used to diagnose PTSD, there's high confidence in their ability to diagnose PTSD. Several effective treatment methods for PTSD are available, offering patients and therapists a choice of different treatment options. Although several treatment options are available, not all treatments have a strong evidence base with military samples, and more research is needed. Furthermore, little is known about which treatment is best for which patient. From the Vietnam War to the Gulf War to Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, anywhere from 11 to 30% of veterans have suffered from PTSD. The Vietnam War ended 46 years ago, but our rates of PTSD have not decreased since then. PTSD is an ongoing issue that is not going to disappear and is ruining our service members' lives or sometimes killing them. When service members are afraid or unable to get help, they are unable to alleviate their symptoms and be a functioning member of society. By looking at the main two types of trauma that cause PTSD in the military, the stigma surrounding PTSD, and the effectiveness of PTSD screening and treatment, we saw how serious of an issue it continues to be. 
In order to help decrease the rates of PTSD in the future, we must conduct more research on ways to prevent it from developing, ways to decrease trauma if possible, ways to decrease the stigma associated with PTSD, and ways to decrease the effectiveness of treatments.